Bill Williamson, in many players' opinions, is one of the most underrated characters of the Red Dead Redemption franchise, so I thought today we'd take a bit of an in-depth look into the man. We'll be delving into his past, his time with the Vandalin Gang, life following the disbandment of the group, character change and development, his demons, and the constant battles that he tortured himself with. Welcome to the video, you're listening to Phil of Philby Gaming, and this is the life of Bill Williamson. Enjoy. Marion Williamson was born in 1886. Little is known about his mother, only that she was absent throughout his childhood, but we do know something of his father. His father, unnamed, was an alcoholic, whose preferred tipple was to mix whiskey with moonshine. Years of this excess of drinking would eventually lead to the man's mental decline, bringing on self-inflicted alcoholic dementia, leading to his demise. This left Marion alone in the world at a young age. He lived rough throughout much of his teens, even taking to heavy drinking, just like his father. As he became older, he did attempt to stabilize his life somewhat by signing up to the United States Army, or more specifically, the 15th Infantry. He later claimed to have served in the cavalry too. More than likely, due to ribbing from other soldiers, Marion would later alter his first name to Bill, a shortening of his surname. He felt embarrassed, believing it to have had a feminine touch. During his time in the forces, Bill would see things that would haunt him for the remainder of his days, primarily during battles with the Native Americans, referring to them as savages. He saw many of his close friends die in such horrific ways. Although he loved his life in the military as it gave him purpose, he had demons that he was constantly battling with, his drinking and his sexuality, the latter of which we'll come back to later on. Under unknown circumstances, in December of 1892, Bill was convicted of attempted murder and deviancy and received a dishonorable discharge. He lost the only thing in life that gave him hope. Deviancy is to describe someone as having the quality of not being usual. This could mean a multitude of things, but in Bill's case, it no doubt referred to his misunderstood sexuality preferences. It's quite plausible that somebody made fun of him about this, leading to the attempted murder. Bill was back to being homeless and alone once more. Although he always feared suffering the same fate as his father, Bill was back on the drink. He would obtain money by robbing passers-by on the highways, retrieving them of their belongings. This continued for around a year, until one evening in 1893, Bill would drunkenly attempt to steal from a particular man. This altercation would be a changing day in the life of Bill Williamson, as that man was none other than notorious outlaw Dutch Vanderland. Instead of giving up his belongings, Dutch simply laughed at Bill and offered to buy him a whiskey. Although Bill was infuriated about the mocking, his love for the drink won his heart and he accepted the offer. As the pair sat at the bar and conversated, Dutch saw potential in his newfound friend. He was strongly built, intimidating and was a trained rifleman. All of these traits would be a perfect fit for an extra gunman or enforcer in the Vanderlind gang. Bill accepted the offer. It was either that or continue drinking heavily and living on the streets. Over the next several years, Bill Williamson would find structure with Dutch and the rest of the gang. Growing up with an absent mother and losing his father when he was young would have been difficult for anyone, but now he had something to live for. He had a family. He would act as the muscle for the gang, often being used during coach robberies or bank heists. He wasn't always the brains of the operation, but he had his uses, and more importantly, he was loyal to Dutch, as he saw him as a saviour. This was most important to the gang's leader. He did, however, continue to drink, but just not as excessive. 
The gang at this time wasn't as large as it was in 1899, but over the next couple of years, members would be recruited in, such as in 1895 when Javier Escuela joined, whom Bill would become a media close friends with, as the pair shared a similar experience of a troubled upbringing. With Bill not having the education that some of the other gang members had, such as John Marston or Arthur Morgan, he gained a reputation as not being much of a thinker. Throughout our journey in Red Dead Redemption 2, Bill would constantly make errors, blunders and misjudgments, such as the dynamite mishap during the prologue, starting the brawl in Valentine when they were supposed to be laying low and getting himself captured in Rhodes by the Gray family during an ambush. He would attempt to become close with some of the gang members, taking a particular shine to Kieran Duffy. It seemed, for the first time in his life, Bill was able to be open about his sexuality preference. The gang didn't seem to care about this, and although they would sometimes rip him in a light-hearted manner, they mainly saw him for what he was, a strong enforcer who was nothing but loyal to the Vandalin boys. This family was everything to Bill, it's all he had, and he intended on keeping it. We all know of the events of Red Dead Redemption 2, so I don't feel it necessary to go over every little detail or mission he was involved in, so we'll skip more towards the later chapters of the game. As Touch's mental health began to decline and the gang would seemingly break off into factions, Bill would often side with Touch, slating the others for what he believed to be their lack of loyalty and questioning of their leader. This later became more prominent during a tense showdown at Beaver's Hollow, although he did originally side with Dutch and Micah when the Pinkertons arrived and everybody fled, Bill at first followed Dutch, but soon split off with Javier Escuela. This is shown when the gang began to pursue John and Arthur, Bill and Javier are nowhere to be seen. Following this altercation, Bill and Javier went dark for several years, no one truly knew what became of them for a while. That was up until 12 years later when information on Bill's whereabouts surfaced. The Pinkerton Detective Agency, rebranded as the Bureau of Investigation, set their sights on wiping out the last of the gangs of the West. Although the Vandalin boys had disbanded some years before, former Pinkerton senior agent and now lead director of the Bureau, Edgar Ross, still held a grudge against the gang, and with a few members still remaining, he had made it his personal project to finish them off, once and for all. Kidnapping former gang associate Abigail Marston alongside her son, Jack, Ross would force her husband, John, to track down his former gang mates and eliminate them himself. Dutch Vanderland, Javier Escuela, and of course, Bill Williamson. Learning of his whereabouts, John Marston would head to Fort Mercer in the southern area of Rio Bravo. It's here, for the first time in over a decade, that John and Bill are reunited. Bill now runs his own posse of outlaws from this stronghold, known simply as the Williamson Gang. The locals are terrified of Bill, which is something that puzzles John, as he knew the man for many years and couldn't picture him as the most feared bandit in the county. But Bill has changed. Upon John's arrival to Fort Mercer, Bill instantly recognises his voice. He tells him to go away, to which John refuses. Bill seems to be a lot more angry than he used to be. He states issues towards both John and their former leader, Dutch Vanderland, declaring that he's the one in charge now. He mocks John's vocabulary as he doesn't understand it. Once again, he didn't have the blessing of an educated upbringing that some of the others did. He gives John the chance to leave, but as John draws his revolver, he's put down by one of Bill's guards. Chuckling to himself at the sight of his former brother fallen, Bill seems to have lost all sense of compassion for those he once knew. Continuing his reign of terror across the southern regions, the Williamson gang 
perform horrific crimes against the locals, slaughtering them before robbing them. This was not the bill we knew in 1899. One crime in particular gives us heavy insight to the man he's become. The Massacre at Ridgewood Farm As the law, aided by John Marston, tracked down Bill, he once again gives John an opportunity to leave, this time choosing not to point his rifle at him, having his men do it instead. When John, for a second time, refuses, Bill orders his gang to open fire. Even though he seems uncompassionate towards John, he doesn't seem to want to be the one to pull the trigger. Maybe there's still a little love inside for his former brother, or maybe it's out of fear. With the law drawing ever closer to Bill, he senses that he needs to escape before being either captured or killed. With the help of his close friend Javier Escuela, Bill flees even further south where he lays low under the protection of the Mexican government and their leader, Colonel Augustin Allende. Hiding away under the protection of the Mexican government doesn't pan out for Bill and upon their capture by both John Marston and rebel leader Abraham Reyes, Bill is betrayed by the colonel, who's trying to save his own skin. Bill Williamson was terrified of being abandoned. This is going back to his absent mother and drunkard father, so teaming alongside Dutch Vanderland and his gang filled a hole in his life. He was terrified of turning into his father. He talked about this quite often at campfires with the other members. He battled with his sexuality for many years. He obviously had feelings towards men, but at times he could be seen discussing the women of the gang. He was possibly still confused about his preference and often tried to prove to himself that he was heterosexual. There's an interaction where Arthur falls victim to a molester and somehow Bill knew about this and confronts him. Was Bill in some form of a relationship with that man? He would constantly try to prove himself to Dutch, taking on work, putting his neck on the line and jumping at every opportunity he could. This was out of loyalty to the gang, but also may have stemmed from a fear of being kicked out of the gang, leaving him alone in the world once more. His days in the army formed the man, he became an explosives expert and a skilled shootist, preferring to use rifles in combat instead of pistols or revolvers. During this time, he saw what power did to people and chose not to live his life that way. This is why he became more of a follower than a leader, but when he formed his own gang in 1911, he became exactly what he was always afraid of, a tyrant ruler. His lack of education would often lead to mistakes and he resented some of the other gang members for this as they were presented with opportunities that he himself was never afforded. When he was in the Vandalin gang, we would see a much softer side to Bill, often showing his vulnerability at times during camp conversations with Kieran Duffy and others. He remained loyal to the gang even during the darker days of their leader right up until they disbanded. This once again is going back to his abandonment issues. The fact that he eventually went his separate ways from everybody, excluding Javier Escuela, shows us that he was still torn about which path to take in life. Marion Bill Williamson, outlaw, brother and friend, passed away in 1911. He was 45 years old. If you guys wish to see me cover the stories of any particular characters in the Red Dead Redemption series, just let me know. If you enjoyed today's video, you all know what to do. Thank you all for watching, you've been listening to Phil, and I'll see you in the next one.